and I forgot. And I knew it, too. And I forgot. And I just went out there and looked at the list. Yeah. I said, oh, my God, I done forgot to clean the building, mm -hmm. and it's been bothering me. Yeah. So I'm going to come and clean the building tomorrow, Lois Willie. And who's supposed to do it tomorrow? No, they do it next Saturday. Is oh, the, is, okay. Is, 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 I missed oh, Saturday. Oh, you're going to do it? Tomorrow. I'm going to do it tomorrow. Oh, okay. So All right. I can free my country. And did you ask the Lord to forgive you? Yes. And, and did you appropriate the cleansing of the blood? Yes. You need to do that. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You told me that yeah, when you right. do yeah. your teaching. Now, and I read the paper. Let me tell you this part of it. Yes, sir. I knew it, and I didn't say a thing about it. Because love covers a multitude of not vacuuming the church. <laughs> I appreciate it. Now, how many's experienced that? See? That's good. What you, what you got? You got something to sh you got something you want to share? <laughs> what was you telling him? I got to hear what you're telling him. I, I told him he's not the only one that has forgotten before. Yeah, I know. Yeah. 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 And things, yeah. and um, you know that is coming up, uh -huh. and then you totally yeah. forgot. Yeah. And so I, I understand, because <laughs> it happened to us before. Oh yeah, it's happened to everybody. Yeah. <laughs> did anybody? <laughs> did did? Yeah. Hey, that's a good one. Hey, they the boss of all of that. Rick and and Missy's the boss of all of that. Yeah. Huh? You told us to be free. I told you to be free. <laughs> we are. We're I free. Don't want your conscience to eat we're, to death. Right, we're free. <laughs> we love everybody. Yeah, because yeah, we, we, we make mistakes too yeah. and forget it. So, yeah. yeah. So you've learned. You've yeah. Learned. Yeah. <laughs> now, this is serious what I'm about to say. Those that are married, did you get your wife a Valentine piece of candy? I didn't hear a thing. Did, did you get did you get a box of cherry candy or something? Well, he took me out three times. Huh? He took me out three times, and I got to order whatever I wanted. So he, I had fried chicken about any time. So he took you out to eat. Oh. Maybe give me a card. Well, I give Susan a card. I want you to know that. I practice what I preach 99% of the time because I'm human too. All right, here comes, here comes Frank. <laughs> Tell us, Frank, uh, how many has ever forgot to get your wife on Valentine's Day? Anybody besides me? <laughs> what you got? Well... I was struggling with, uh, he's checking his watch. No, when, well, when he's going to blow the whistle on me here in a minute. So, so uh, last week I was thinking, well, Sunday's coming and I got to go get something for my wife, you know, because she it does was, everything. It was Saturday, though. Yeah, I know, but, but last, last Monday I'm thinking, oh. I'm thinking it's coming. Oh, you I know, got you. Now. You know, because it's kind of like back when I used to work. Yeah. Saturday was okay, but then Sunday after church, I'm thinking, well, I got, I got to go to work in the morning, you mm -hmm. know, so that's coming on you, you know. Well, about Monday, I'm thinking, well, I, I got to get to that store, you know. Mm -hmm. So the front doorbell rings. I forgot which day it was. It was Wednesday. So I, I've been struggling with it two days. You know, it's, it's, you know it's, it's rough for me to have to go to the store. Yeah. I mean, I just, I just don't like to go to the store, but uh, I said, well, I got to do it because she does everything else. She takes care of my mama. She takes care of me. She washes the clothes. She washes the dishes. Sounds she like makes the bed. You know, she cuts my hair. Yeah. She tells me what to do. No, I mean, <laughs> I mean, you know, she just, I know. I'd be totally lost. I'd be out there walk. It'd be it'd be Wednesday night. And I'd be out there walking around. I wouldn't know what day it was. Willie, I wouldn't even. I I'd never clean up. I I would never remember. She says, you know, we got to clean up today. Yeah, after she already told me on Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday, but then Saturday. Oh, we do. But she takes care of me. I don't know what I did before I met her. 
I know who did the shopping. I'd talk mama into going 30 years ago. She would, she would take care of all the shopping. But you got the picture. I don't really like to shop. So anyway, I'm thinking, well, I got to get to that store because, you know, I, I got to do that. Well, last Wednesday, the doorbell rang, and it was Landy. And Landy says, you know, you do so much for us girls that we just wanted to, you know, give you this. And she said, it's all right if you, if you give it to your wife. I said, you don't mind giving me something, and I can give it to my wife? Mm -hmm. So they, you know, they make all these beautiful baskets, yeah. and they sell them down here. And the people just, you know, the people love them, yeah. you know. And, and, I mean, it's a beautiful basket. It's a, it's a beautiful bouquet of, of roses yeah. in, a, in a beautiful crystal glass yeah. jar. Yeah. And, I mean, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. And they did that for me, and I didn't have to go to the store. I was able to give that to my wife, and, and the girls didn't mind. You know, they're my sisters. Yeah, right. they they my yeah. sisters. I got papers. They adopted me. They adopted me. I am their legal brother. They're looking out for you. They, and they looked out for me, and I got blessed. They got blessed because they were able to give me something. I got blessed because I had something to give to my wife. And I didn't have to go to the store. The, the only people that didn't get blessed was the store. Oh. But they, you know, they're making, they making millions anyway. So, so I was blessed. Yeah. And those girls, they're my sisters. Yeah. Amen. Justine says, y'all y'all so good. You're just so good to us. I says, you know, my purpose on this earth is to take care of my sisters. And when I can't do that anymore, the Lord will just take me on home. Amen. So there you go. There you go. Hallelujah. Woo. Hallelujah. But I tell you what, when I went in and got my wallet, got back, peace came. Now, see, that's walking in the spirit. And let me just say something that many times we miss it. We don't mean to miss it. We don't liberally. Uh, liberally. That's good. Um. Uh, willfully try to sin or do anything wrong, but being a human being, sometimes we mess up. All right, let's go ahead and uh, start the message. Praise God. Uh, let's turn to 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 18, okay? Put the uh, King James up first, Rick. Second Peter three eighteen. Here we go. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. But grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be glory both now and forever. Amen. Now look at that. When you read the Bible, break things down. But grow in grace. Now the question I have when I read the Bible. How do you grow in grace? Okay? Well, there again, grace comes from God. And the Bible says, if we come to the throne of God, we come to receive something. And what do we come to the throne of God to receive? Grace and help and mercy in time of need. It says in James 4, Six, that God will give us more and more grace to overcome those tendencies to forget to clean the building. See? <laughs> and so as we move along in life, God will begin to give us more grace as we go to him to, uh, to attain the grace, because the grace comes from him. Now, it says that we're to grow in grace. And that's really not my message tonight, but my message is, and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The Bible says, my people perish for the lack of knowledge. People today, many Christian peoples today, and those that are not Christians, get into a lot of problems because they don't have the knowledge that they need to be able, to be able if you're a Christian, to be able to overcome the world, the flesh, and the devil. 
the Bible says that we're to stand fast in that liberty wherewith Christ has set us free and be not entangled again in the yoke of bondage. So God has set us free by his grace. The Bible says we're saved by grace through faith, not of works, lest any man should boast. So grace, praise God for God's amazing grace. Now, Paul says, I am what I am by the grace of God. Uh, Paul says in um, 2 Corinthians chapter, I think it's um, uh, chapter 12, verse 9, it says that he went to the Lord about this problem he had. And what it was, it was a uh, seducing spirit. It was a spirit of darkness, uh, a messenger, the Bible says, from Satan that was a... It was buffering him. And he went three times to the Lord. And God said, my grace is sufficient. And I pondered on that for 57 years. I've been a Christian. And I finally come to the conclusion that there's power in grace. There is overcoming power in grace. There's saving power in grace. Because we're saved by grace through faith. So God's grace was sufficient for Paul to overcome that messenger, which was an evil spirit that was buffering his body. And so the, God poured in the grace. Now, and really, as I interpret that, here's, what I would, here's how I would say it. God talking to Paul. Paul, I want you to know... Uh, you're going to have to endure this for a while, but I'm going to give you more and more grace. And I want you to know that I, as I give you more and more grace, you will be able to stand up under those attacks of the enemy, and eventually I will give you enough grace that you will find that my grace is sufficient because my grace has power, and through that grace you will be able to go forward and overcome that demonic power that's afflicting your flesh. So grace has overcoming power. The Bible says the Holy Spirit is the spirit of grace. And so, in a sense, when you get more and more grace, you're getting more and more of God, the Holy Spirit, to help you to overcome that situation in our lives. Does that make sense? Do we see that? Okay, I hope you see that now. Now, let's look at the knowledge. Grow. If you have a beautiful flower, you know the secret how to make it grow. You put it in the earth, and you water it. It gets sunshine. It takes root. And as it takes root, it begins to draw up the nourishment in the earth to cause it to grow. So as we abide in Christ, as we abide in Christ, we're able to grow in grace and knowledge because our roots are being rooted in his love, being rooted in Christ Jesus, and we're drawing his strength and his power to cause us to grow and mature, okay? Now, we have the Word of God. Knowledge is important. Just like the knowledge that I had when I got out there in the car and I didn't have the driving license with me. I had the knowledge that my conscience was telling me, Bob, you need to go ahead and have your driving license if you're going to get in the car and drive this car. I had that knowledge. So that could have kept me from getting a ticket or if I got in a wreck out here and I didn't have my driving license all kind of complications could have happened. How many sees that? So, it's good to be able to have a conscience that's clear. Now, let's look at uh, 1 Timothy 1.19 now and just hit this thing about the conscience. It'll be on the board in the Amplified. Holding fast to the faith. 
Yeah, we could talk about that. How do you hold fast to the faith? But that's not what I want to talk about right now. That leaning of the entire human personality on God. Well, that's a good uh, uh, thing to see that uh, when you're holding fast to the faith, you're leaning on the everlasting arms of Jesus. Now, you are leaning on the entire human personality, your whole being on God in absolute trust and confidence. That's powerful. That's, that's holding to, fa fast to the faith. And having a good, clear conscience. I have dealt with hundreds of people in my ministry over the years, many of them. And people that have bad conscience, someone, someone says, because when you have bad conscience, you're mean. <laughs> How many can testify to that? See, you, you, sometimes you probably don't know why you're mean. Why did you cook, uh, cook the cat? That's a good one. Why did you kick the cat? Huh? Get out of my way. Anybody know? Bad conscience. So your conscience will make you miserable if you don't obey it. That's just the way it is. Every time you touch a hot stove, tell me. Oh, it won't burn me. Touch it, I dare you. Ooh, it'll burn you. Every time. I don't care how pretty you look. I don't care how much money you got. I don't care how many times you go to church. Every time you touch that hot stove, it's going to burn you. Every time we do not obey our conscience. Now, I'm not, I'm not a mean man, but I lived long enough to tell you the truth. If you don't obey your conscience, you're going to be a miserable person. And all of God's people said? I guarantee, can I use you for an example? I'll be, I'll be easy on you, okay? Really, you know. That bothered you. And we all know, and they've experienced that. How many have experienced that? You, you didn't clean the building or you didn't do what you're supposed to do. Okay. That shows you you've got a conscience, and that shows you that your conscience is not defiled yet. Because there's a lot of, in the Bible about defiled conscience, evil conscience, all kind of different things about conscience. Did it do you good to come up here and testify on that? Did you hear what it said? It would do some of you guys good too to come up and, and get your conscience clear and just tell the church how, remember this goes, now I mean not everybody here, we're all saints, but I mean this goes out in the world, right? <laughs> How, be kind, Bob, I'm trying. How hypocritical some folks are. I'm getting me. Remember, this goes out now, out in the world. How many of you know this goes out in the world through that what? Through our website, right? He's the man that puts it out there, Mike. Raise your hand where everybody can see you. That's good. Thank you. How many has ever been hypocritical besides me? Making other people think that you're a saint when you ain't. <laughs> oh, my. See, we can't stand truth. Oh, don't, don't speak truth. But how many know that's so true? But I mean, you know what? You'll never have victory in your life until you confess and get it cleared and walk with a clean conscience. <clears throat> you know, I think the first kids that we have, we totally almost destroy as a parent. My first daughter, Patsy, <clears throat> when I finally got saved, and I began to get into the Bible, God began to deal with my conscience about how I corrected her. And back in those days, I had a, 
a lot of angry anger build up in me. Okay, a lot of anger build up in me. Anybody ever had any anger in your me? Let's see your hands. Yeah, yeah. If you didn't raise your hand, that's okay. We know you got it. Every human being has some. But be angry, but sin not. No sin to be angry, but watch how you handle that anger because many times there's people in jail today spending 40 years in jail because just one moment, one little second, they got angry. Somebody passed him in the car and cut him off. And he went to the red light and they got out of the car, got their golf car, not golf stick, and we're going over there and going to beat that windshield in. I got an article like that. And the guy says, and the guy finally came to his senses, what am I doing? I could kill the man. He could kill me. Our wives would suffer. Our children would suffer. Everybody at, at the job would everybody. Just one little moment of anger. You pull the gun, shoot the guy. Now he's dead and you got all your life in jail or you'll get the electric chair. One little bit of anger. And I thank God that through my anger period of time, God delivered me because there was, a, there was a point in my life, this is the way I describe it, you could push me to a certain point. How many of you know what I'm talking about? At a certain point, I come out swinging. Well, that's, that's normal because I think that's the way it is with an animal. You get an animal in a corner, he's going to come out of that corner, and you better watch it. So, Thank God that God teaches us how to overcome these things in our lives because I don't believe I'd be living today if I had not overcome the anger. People get, today there is so much stress on people. So much stress. People get angry about nothing. Just, just. Now, I want to share something. When I share something, it's to help you. How many thinks I'm perfect? Not a perfect person's hand. You're right. I'm not. I'm not perfect. Now, God has helped me to overcome a lot of anger. The other day, Susan and me were sitting down. I said, honey, how do you like my, how'd you like my message? Did you learn anything? She hesitated. I'm thinking, uh-oh. I said, honey, what did you learn? And I know I'm, I, I, I'm trying to overcome this comical thing about my little, I go off these dead-end roads, you know what I mean? And uh, she don't like that. Stick to the subject. Honey, I do stick to, but people need to be loosened up a little bit, you know. They come in all bound up, you know, and I try to get them loosened up a little bit, tell them a joke or two, you know, get them loosened up. And all of a sudden, down in here, a little anger came up. And it come up, and it come out of my mouth, and I said a bad word. I said, D-A-M, how do you spell that word? <laughs> That's close enough. And I jumped up, and I went to the door, but I calmed down real quick, and the Lord was on top of my case. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. He won't let you get away with anything, will he? You see, he's not, he's not up there with a baseball bat. He's a loving, heavenly father. He's the best coach you can have. He'll let you know and tell you the truth. But he'll always make a way for you to escape. And when you do something like that, it doesn't make him feel like I can't love you no more because you said that, you know, that word. But see, I'm just being honest. Because if I'm not honest with you, you might think I'm perfect. I'm not perfect. But I am holy. I am righteous. I am set apart to God. I am clean, white and clean. 
But you see, when, now, I want to ask you a question. Why did I say that word? I know why. I can diagnose it for you. Do you know? Because somewhere back in my life, I was put down, put down, put down, put down. Now, listen to me now. Put down, put down, put down. But I overcome a lot of that put down, and I'm, I'm really a lot freer. How many has ever heard about the straw that breaks the camel's back? That was the straw because there was still a little bit of that, I can never do nothing right. Come on, now, love me. I'm trying to help you. So you have to identify your problem if you're going to get help. That's why you come to church. And I realized that all the way back in my life, the people would make me feel that way. And you could bring a perfect sermon, and they'd find out something that they didn't like and jar your case. How many ever experienced that? Come on. How many honest people we have in here? Y'all not honest back there? <laughs> Before you leave here, you probably will be. So you got to know what turns you off and why you get angry. If you don't, you'll never overcome it. So I know it. And I said, God, I need more grace. I need to grow in grace, more grace to get all of that out. But see, it didn't last long. Now, years ago, I mean, I'd have been mad at least a couple, you know, five or six years <laughs> over a little thing like that. <laughs> no, just kidding. But I would have a much longer. I'd go out in the woods and push down a few trees and kick a few dogs and bring a few chicken heads. And, I mean, you know, how many of you know what I'm talking about? Or go to get drunk. Get another beer. There stands the drink. Why are you drinking, Bob? I'm fine. Ain't nothing wrong with me. <laughs> I hope I'm not hitting a chord tonight. Am I helping you any tonight? I hope you are. See, you need to understand why you click. Why you click that way? Why you get mad? Why you angry? Why is your conscience bothering you? Well, you're here to learn because all your life, if you don't accept yourself and accept God's love and his deliverance, you'll be miserable all the days of your life. I'm not talking about heaven and hell here. If you're a Christian and you're saved and you love the Lord, you can't get no more saved than you are. But you're still in this body. And if you don't know how to overcome the world, the flesh, and the devil, you're going to be miserable. Now, I can say tonight, even though I made a mistake, Instantly, I'd ask God to forgive me. I'd come to Susan, and it took me three weeks before I could, I could finally get rid of my pride and ask her to forgive me. How many does wait that long? Instantly, I knew if I was going to have any peace, I got to get clear with God, hello church, and clear with my precious wife. And, of course, she'd say, honey, I love you, babe. It's okay. Don't worry about it. Because she understands. Now, put that up there again. I'm, no, it's up there. Look at that. And having a good, clear conscience by rejecting and thrusting from them their conscience, some individuals have made, have made shipwreck of their faith. Now, look at that. They're, they shipwreck their faith. How? By not having a clear conscience, you can shipwreck your faith. Oh, you can go through all the motions. Come to church every once in a while. Make people think, you know, you're in with the club. I mean, nobody here, but I'm talking about, you know, people out there that see the website. And now you're living a dual life. 
You ever seen a lizard when he's uh, on a green leaf, he turns green? And when he's on a, uh, a brown tree, he turns brown. And some folks, are, when they're around me, they're very godly people. They get away from me. Oh, my goodness. They're the life of the party. You ever seen anybody like that? Hmm? And their conscience is not clear, but their pride level is so high, they could not, no way, let people know there's still a snake in the grass. You know, when you come clean with God, I know that's, that's street language. But I'm a street man, okay? You, you recognize that, don't you? That kind of language, huh? Yeah, you rec I know you do. I'm a street, and see, I, I, see, God deals with us in all of those things to clear all of that out where we can be happy, where we can be free, where we can stand fast in that liberty wherewith Christ has set us free and be not entangled again in the yoke of bondage. That's Galatians chapter 5, verse 1. So I'm asking you, as, as you read the Bible, do you, do you take inventory? Susan and me will read the Bible. And I said, now, honey, we want to keep a clear conscience because that's how you hear God and you can have the peace of God in your life. So we, uh, I turned over to uh, Galatians. I'm finding it right here. Galatians 5. Galatians 5. Yeah, that's a good one. Everybody, Galatians 5. Uh, I said, honey, let's just see uh, if we have any of this stuff in us. And, uh, and then if we do, let's ask God to uh, help us get rid of it. And uh, so we turn, uh, we turn to, uh, this is... Uh, Galatians 5, let's start with uh, verse 15. I like that one, verse 15. Now, Paul is talking to the Galatians church. And here's what he says, if you bite. Now, this is also in families, husbands and wives. But if you bite and devour one another in partism, strife and strife, be careful that you and your whole fellowship are not consumed by one another. I've seen that in churches. And I've seen it years ago at the Shield of Faith. And to root that out, boy, I mean, I had to do some strong preaching. What do you mean bite and devour one another? How many, strife, how many knows what strife is? Arguing, fussing, uh, the the what you call the power struggle. Uh, God has set it up for the man to be the head of the home, and the woman says, "No way! Are you going to rule over me?" Bip! And then the fighting starts. How many's ever been in a family that that, that they they fought a lot? Let's see your hands. One back there. Yeah. That's awful, isn't it? Biting and devouring one another, they destroy their relationships. Now, this is what Susan don't like about when I preach. Susan and me had an argument, argument one time. And... Uh, she hit me in the head with the frying pan, and it, it, it sort of went, and I was so, for 61 years, I've been obedient. There was no more strife or nothing like that. 
I said, honey, that's what you feel like, do it, just do it. It's okay. If we don't have enough money to pay the bills, you'll just have to get you a job, that's all. Now, I know that's funny, isn't it? And she don't like that. How many gets the picture? One, two, three, you got to get the picture. God did the work in us. And we let the law of love control us, and therefore, we are a happy couple. You know, I've had this cold, you know, and uh, God is healing it. But we've been over there. I I've been, been outside. I've been inside, but I tell you what, I've been in the Word of God. Susan and me last night had communion. At, I think it was 10 o'clock last night. We had communion and read the Bible, and... Uh, and went to bed, I think, about 11 o'clock, and slept like a, wow. I mean, we put it away. How I many know what putting it away is? You know, Susan will go like this. <clears throat> and I go. <clears throat> we are so one now in the spirit. So one. <clears throat> <clears throat> I say, honey, wake up. What is that? I say, let me, let me do the <laughs> first, and you do <laughs> first. Okay. So we change, you know, get a little different. On, yeah, okay. <laughs> now, see, Susan don't like that. Did y'all like that? <laughs> All right, listen to this. Verse 16, here we go. To keep a clear conscience, but I say walk and live habitly in the Holy Spirit, responsive to and controlled and guided by the Spirit. Then you will certainly not gratify the cravings and desires of the flesh, of human nature without God. Now, you know yourself. If I let my, my flesh go, I don't know. I'll probably get in a lot. We probably burn this DVD tonight. How many knows if you let your flesh have its way, you get into trouble? If I didn't love the Lord and didn't know God, I'd still be out there in the honky tonk. My flesh would. See, I'm talking about our flesh. Now, some of you probably wouldn't do that. You'd probably be down at. Uh, Walmart buying up everything that you think you need, which you don't, but you buy it anyway because you think, well, you know, hello, anybody out there? Throw that to one side. If you let your flesh have its way, you're going to be a miserable critter trying to live for God. So the Bible says, walk in the Spirit, and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. The flesh always wants more, like I said tonight. I remember years ago, back in 1958, I was making, uh, I got out of the Air Force. I got my job out there at the Air Base, civil service. And I was making about a uh, dollar and 69 cent an hour. Okay, dollar sixty nine cent an hour. Boy, that's good, isn't it? And I remember the next raise would have put me up for two dollars and fifty cent. I'd be, wow, man, ah, ah, ah. two dollars and fifty cent. Well, my, I could let's see, I could buy that new car. I, I could buy that. I could buy this. I could. Blah, 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 blah. And I got a raise, and I made two, uh, two fifty an hour. Wow, man! And after about three months, boy, this is great. What's the next raise? You know, I, I need another raise here. <laughs> How many of you know that? And, and you just keep on, keep on, keep it on. Well, in one way, that's not too bad. But is it the flesh? Is it the flesh that's never satisfied, and it is never satisfied? I went to Ryan's, uh, yeah, as soon as we stopped by Ryan's, 
And uh, I think my granddaughter gave me a card on, on, on not Ryan's, but uh, OK Corral. Uh, not OK Corral, but, you know, Golden Corral. OK. Boy, I like that place, don't you? <laughs> Some of you ain't talking. I can see that right now. I was real moderate with my eating, but I got to the ice cream, and I fixed me one of them big, got a big bowl, and I put an ice cream in there, nuts on it, and, and, and chocolate on it, and, and uh, whatever that other stuff was, and man, it was really, you know, and I ate that, you know. Boy, that was good. I said to Susan, Hunt, would you like to have an ice cream cone? Oh, yeah, I sure would. So I went up, and I got one for her, and I got one for me, and I come back, I give her one. And I devoured mine. I said, boop, boop. That was good, wasn't it? I said, would you like to have another one? <laughs> she said, yeah. So I got two more to come back. And I mean, it was like this, you know. So to come back, you had to be curved to fall over. So she consumed hers and I consumed mine. You think a man would be satisfied with two combs of ice cream and a big dish, but I had to have another one. Have you ever seen anybody like that, Willie? Yes, sir. Huh? What's the name? Oh, my, don't tell me that. But see, the flesh is never satisfied. You get a raise, then you want another raise. You get three ice creams, you want four ice creams. How many love me? Three people. I'll see if I can get you. All right. Now, listen. Let's move on down here. Wow. Guided by the Holy Spirit. That's the solution. Turn to the next verse. For the desires of the flesh are opposed to the Holy Spirit. And the desires of the Spirit are opposed to the flesh. That's where the warfare comes in. That's where you've got to choose. If you choose wrongly and you know what the right thing to do, but you don't do it and you go against your conscience, your conscience is going to bother you. I don't care how pretty you are. I don't care how much money you give to the church. I don't, it will bother you. That's just the way it is. And once you learn that, then you learn to be obedient because the peace of God is so wonderful. Now, I didn't learn that overnight. I fought my conscience just like you guys fight your conscience. But I have learned. Anybody here with me on that? Are you learning? Are you learning to obey your conscience? Because if you don't, you're just a miserable person. That's all I can say. Oh, you might have it pushed down, but somewhere along the line it's going to explode. To the flesh, godless human nature, for these are anatomistic to each other, continuously withstanding in conflict with each other. Are you wrestling inside? Your conscience says this is what you should do, and your flesh says, no, I'm going to do this. I know it's Sunday morning, but I ain't getting up to go to church. How many fights with that? Don't raise your hand. I don't want to see it. I know who fights with it. I have fought with that, too. You know, it's a funny thing. You don't go to church, then your conscience bothers you. And then your wife comes home, and somehow you lie to her, and you say, oh, you know, I really wanted to go, but I was so sleepy. Yeah, you went to bed at 12 o'clock last night, no wonder. So Susan and me have learned to get in bed by at least 9 o'clock and prepare, have everything ready, be in bed by 9 or 10, and then we sleep to seven, get up, boom, 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 boom. And it works out good, and your conscience is clear. I'm here on time, ready to go. This is how you do it. That's how you live a victorious life. Now, notice it says, <sighs> continuously withstanding and conflict with each other. We're talking about the flesh and the spirit, so that you are not free, but are prevented from doing what you desire to do. Let that soak in. That's why you've got to be totally, absolutely committed 
and you're going to be dis disciple yourself, discipline yourself, and do it God's way. That's when you enter into the power. That's when you enter into the peace. That's when you enter into a tremendous personal relationship with God. But my wife and me have nothing between each other. We have a perfect relationship with one another. If I do something, I'll make sure that she knows. If she's going to do something, she lets me know. But we live in perfect peace. Now, that's the way every family is to, to, to be because that we are an example of the church. The family is to be an example of the church. Okay? Let's go to the next scripture. But if you are guided, led by the Spirit, you are not subject to the law. Boy, that's powerful. You're not subject to the law. If you're subject to the law, you're going to try to always do what the law says in the flesh. Now you're really in trouble because ain't nobody can keep all the laws. But if you walk in the Spirit... You walk in love, and love is the fulfillment of the law. Put the Gal uh, Galatian 5, 13. 5, 13. Galatians 5, 13. We'll back up. For you, brethren, were indeed called to freedom. Only do not let your freedom be an incentive to your flesh and an opportunity or excuse for selfishness, and by the way, if you want to know the problem of all of us, see that word selfishness? Somebody say amen. Just, it's true. God still loves you. We're all selfish to a degree. If we don't do it my way, we aren't going to be friends anymore. Some of you don't know how to take that. Take it in love. You know it's true. I'll get that last piece of chicken. If you put your hand on it, you can kiss your hand goodbye. See, if you stop and really analyze yourself, because that's what the Bible says. Do not let your freedom be an incentive to eat the last piece of chicken and an opportunity or excuse for selfishness, but through love you should serve one another. And folks, you'll have to let the flesh die. If you don't, it will dominate, control, and you'll always be miserable in your life, and you'll never have peace. That's why it takes total surrender to Christ. Now, it's natural. That natural element is in every one of us to survive. We understand that. But somebody tell me, what is the greatest degree of love? Anybody know? The greatest love is for a man to lay down his life for a friend. Did you hear that? No greater love than this, than a man to lay down his life for a friend. So husbands are supposed to lay down their lives for their wives, and their wives to lay down their life. What do you mean lay down your life? Lay down your selfishness. We'll be friends as long as you let me have that last piece of chicken. I remember my uh, son-in-law would uh, come by the house and we'd have dinner. And we'd have one piece of chicken left. And I wanted it. And I looked at my son-in-law and I said to myself, Son, if you want to get out of this house alive, you're just trying to get that last piece of chicken. Some of you don't know how to take this. 
And I could almost hear him say, he called me dad. Dad, if you want to stay alive any longer, you try to get that last piece of the chicken. But then the Lord would speak. Give, and it be given unto you. Press down, shake it together, run it over. And I say, son, why don't you go ahead and have that last piece of chicken? <laughs> we took it like, I mean, I'd never seen a fast fork in my life come at that, pop that chicken out of there, put it on his place. And then my wife comes over here and says, honey, I got this other plate of chicken. You want some of it? It's hot. I just got it off the grill. <sighs> Thank you, darling. See, God will take care of you when you just simply trust him. Now, I use that simple little thing about chicken. Some of you know what I'm talking about. With Willie, it's not chicken, it's ice cream. All right, look at this now. Look what it says. Let's turn to, look at it. You should ser serve one another. So, what, I didn't get married to serve you. I got married for you to serve me. See, so people who go, go to get married, you got to change all your philosophy. When you talk to your boyfriend, you got to say, honey, I want to be your wife. I want to serve you. Wow, this generation would think you crazy. Is that not what the Lord says? That's not the mere words of man. That's the word of God Almighty who created us. I'm marrying you because I know you're going to serve me. You're going to be the best husband in the world to me. And he says, well, let's just get married and we'll see. Because if you don't have the right theology and the right understanding of the scriptures, you'll bite and devour one another. Amen? All right. I know this is tough. All right, listen to this now. Let's look at uh, the next verse. Hallelujah. This is getting good, isn't it? How many is enjoying this? <laughs> For the whole law concerning human relationship is complied in within the one precept you shall love your husband or your neighbor as you do yourself Woo! that's real christianity real christianity wow man all right the next verse for that no we've already gone to that one going down to uh verse eight uh 18 and if we're going to move quick we've got to quit but if you are guided, led by the Holy Spirit, you are not subject to the law. Now, the next verse now. Here we go. This is getting really rough now. Now, the doing or the practices of the flesh. Now, we went over this. I said, now, Susan, if I'm doing some of this, I want you to be honest with me, and I'm going to be honest with you. I say, uh, obvious, they are immorality. Are we doing anything in that area? No. All right, we check that. We're okay. Impurity. Are we impure about anything? Are we doing anything that's impure? Not that I know of. We ask the Holy Spirit. Okay, check that off. Indecency. Indecency. Boy, I could really work on that one. <laughs> Lock the back door for me, will you? <laughs> All right, we go to the next. Idolatry. Worshiping things of the world. Sorcery. Enmity. Strife. Always striving. Jealousy. How many's ever had jealousy in here besides me? Yeah, be honest. Raise your hand. I could read. I could. Listen, we're all from the same stump. Stump Adam. Jealousy. Boy, I used to be so jealous of Susan. Man. I told you about the cuckoo clock, didn't I? 
Remember the cuckoo clock? Well, I'm not, I don't have time to go. Around. Oh, the time's running out, but let's finish this and we'll close it up. Division, always creating division in the body of Christ or in the family. Dissension, always descending, always party spirits. Uh, we belong to this party in the church or we belong to this party in the church. Uh, fractions, sect with peculiar opinions, hearsays. Next, all of this is the flesh. Envy, drunkenness carousing, and the like, I warn you beforehand, just as I did previously, that those who do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Boom, that's it. So how do you overcome that? If you like to Christ, walk in the Spirit, and you will not do those things. Very simple, not complicated. Okay, but on the other hand, if you make a mistake, not meaning to, or maybe meaning to, God says if you confess it, God is faithful and just to forgive you and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Now that's God's grace. Because I'll tell you, when I look at that, I used to do all of that. Of course, none of you did, but I did. And that's why God delivered me. That's why I let God do the work in me. Let's pray. Father, I thank you that.